He said Christianity would go and a new world order would come. This guy got rid of his crown and started that new order all by himself. Question, were traditional Catholics wrong to resist the Great Reset 50 years ago? Whether you're Catholic or not, you might wonder, why did they take down the Catholic Church first? Plus, to save the kids, the cancel culture takes out Peter Pan, Dumbo, and Dr. Seuss. But Cardi B, oh, she's just fine. Good news, Joe Biden says we might be able to have a small cookout on the 4th of July. Mask up, America. Just 15 more years to slow the spread. Meanwhile, a lone Catholic nun stares down the New World Order while the mighty Catholic bishops yuck it up. All that and more tonight from the editor's desk. Again, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Matt coming to you from the Remnant newspaper. So the cancel culture is now officially out of control, which makes sense when you think about it, because if you're going to reset the world, which is what they want to do, you're going to have to clear the slate. You need to cancel everything, which is what they're doing. So Francis, in fact, you saw this. He just canceled private masses at the heart, the center of Christendom. Cancel private masses in St. Peter's Basilica totally banned the old traditional Latin mass in the Basilica, and it just seems bizarre that now after they've shut down the churches throughout the whole world, cut off the sacraments, cut off the masses, now they decided that this was a good time to also cancel the mass inside St. Peter's. I mean, who's running this thing? Who is running? <laughs> we got too much grace flowing around out there. We got to do something about that, so I don't know. Very, very happy that Cardinal Burke has just lashed out against this, even on his own website. He's got a great statement, and we can throw that up on the screen, where he calls this directive from the Secretary of State a direct violation of universal church law. Politics now, of course. Joe Biden is canceling America. But if we all do, well, this is exciting news. I was so excited to see this. I know you watch this. If we all do exactly as Uncle Joe wants us to do, Chances are not, not, nothing's guaranteed, but chances are good. We might be able to have a little cookout on the 4th of July. If we do our part, if we do this together, by July the 4th, there's a good chance you, your families and friends, will be able to get together in your backyard or in your neighborhood and have a cookout and a barbecue and celebrate <laughs> Independence Day. Okay, Joe. <laughs> that doesn't mean large events with lots of people together, but it does mean on, Joe. It's small groups will be able to get this together. Guy. This has to be the most aggressive, passive-aggressive statement or, you know, statement coming out of a presidential speech in the history of presidential speeches. I mean, he's not writing this. Joe Biden certainly is not writing his own papers these days. He's having trouble with his own toilet paper, I would imagine, but he's not writing his own speeches. And again, it does kind of remind you, it makes you ask the question, who's in charge? You know, who in the world is calling us? Who is Big Brother? You know, whoever it is right now, whether it's Gates or Soros or somebody we don't know about, they are superseding and overruling and really kind of phasing out government, local government, state government, federal government, doing whatever they want. We are now following the rules of a very mysterious and powerful person. But in any case, whoever it is, in order to make this happen, the Great Reset needs to cancel, cancel, cancel the past. So everybody's talking about this poor little waif. What's her name? Megan? Mega Mouth? Megan Markle? Whatever. I didn't even uh, thank God. That poor royal family has been such a mess for so long that I'm a little torn on this one. But still, I think I see what's going on. Megan is trying to cancel what's left of the royal family in the UK because the whole idea of monarchy has to be utterly and completely not only destroyed, but the, the memory of it has to be phased out. And this is not surprising that Meghan Markle is doing that because her father-in-law, let's not forget, is the biggest globalist reset nut job on the planet. We, start, we need only look to the United Nations Secretary General, to the IMF, uh, the EU, the Petersburg Climate Dialogue, the Canadian government, the COP26 Universities Network, and business leaders around the world to see. We have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to keep in touch, because we don't know how much longer we'll be on YouTube, please click the link in the description box below and sign up for Michael Matt's eBlast. Boom. Yeah. Nailed it. Nice. Thanks, man.
and from the sublime to the ridiculous, they are also trying to get rid of Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Dr. Seuss has to go. Now, I'm no, I mean, you know, my kids grew up, we read them Dr. Seuss, you know, forever. I don't think he was a particularly conservative fellow, God rest his soul, whatever he was, he was a pretty liberal guy. I think the problem with him is that his characters are male and female, and this is problematic. His characters also hail from the days of nationalities and borders and cultural identities. In a statement Tuesday, Dr. Seuss Enterprise said, These books portray people in ways that are hurtful and wrong. In and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street, an Asian person is portrayed wearing a conical hat, holding chopsticks, and eating from a bowl. Now, I'm not sure to whom it's offensive. I don't think there's any victims groups out there being really offended. When I see some German, when I see somebody in later Hosen, you know, looking kind of Austrian old world, I don't get all ticked off. Not... I, I, I guess I should get with the cancel culture and say, how dare you put Germans in lederhosen? That's just not, that's got to stop. And instead, I think it's kind of nice. It's kind of cute. I think it's sort of, it's reminiscent of better times, you know, but that's, I'm just, I'm programmed a little different. I don't fit into the cancel culture at all. And of course, this guy in chopsticks, Dr. Seuss, gotta go. That's racist now. Can't have that because we're all global citizens now. We all eat with the same food and forks and knives, no chopsticks. Although I was just in Japan last summer, I think it was. Everybody's using chopsticks over there. I guess it's racist to point that out. But anyway, not Dr. Seuss. We all have to listen to the same music. We have to speak the same language. We have to obey the same globalist central command and on and on it goes. So Dr. Seuss, sayonara, have a nice life. That's going to go. Of course, Peter Pan is dangerous. Dumbo is dangerous. The Aristocats, dangerous, gotta go. But once again, I would remind our viewers, in the case of the Disney projects that have been canceled now, it was the Disney Corporation itself that got rid of them. Some parents have criticized the move. Disney says it's committed to creating stories with inspirational themes reflecting human diversity. So the old stories have to go, the old books have to go, the old movies have to go. Parents need to be left, in other words, with no stories to hand down, no traditions to hand down. You know what that means? That means no past. And a civilization without a past doesn't have a future because it has no foundation. But that's what they want, to clean the slate completely and reset everything. You know, the Christian family is being redefined. Christian liturgies are being canceled. Christianity itself the thing that built the old world order now, it's being canceled, friends, right in front of your eyes. You're wearing that mask as a daily reminder that Big Brother is in charge of your life now. How do you feel about that? You comfortable? You feeling safe? You feeling safe? You're going to keep wearing that thing in the car? Wearing it outside? Stay safe? Because the thing is, when it comes to the science behind the mask, if I could just sort of interrupt myself for a moment. They said, the experts told us it was 15 days. 15 days to slow the spread. Now, there's no other way of looking at this. This is absolutely fact, this is not opinion. Either they were wrong, thus making them so incompetent that we shouldn't be listening to anything these scientific experts say, or they were lying when they told us 15 days, days which have now turned into 15 months. You can't have it any other way. This is what they're either lying to us or they're incompetent. So why are we all listening to these people? I don't know. I don't know. But the reality is they make up part of this big brother entity. And he's the one who's omnipresent now where God used to be. He's everywhere, isn't he? He's in those six feet that separate you from everyone else. There he is right there, keeping us separate, keeping us apart, telling us what to do, where to stand, what to think, what to put on our faces. He may let you go back to that football game or maybe one of your masses, liturgy, sometime soon for a few days, but it's going to be temporary. And make no mistake about it, whether you go back to the football game or school or the mass or your liturgy, it's up to him. This is the world you are creating for yourself. If you're still out there masking up and vaccinating yourself and doing all this stuff going along with this, you are creating this for yourself. We still have time to do something about this if we act right now. Because they're experimenting, obviously. This was a, this was a test run that, they were, that they're, they're pulling off right now. And we're just going for it. Hook, line, and sinker, man. 
I saw a guy in the picture the other day. It was going viral. A guy on a motorcycle. No helmet and a mask. <laughs> no helmet, no leather jacket, and a mask. We're doing this to ourselves now. We're the ones who are being completely ri ridiculous. And whether you're a Catholic or not, I would ask you, and that's the point of the show tonight, I would ask you to please understand how this all got started. And I know I don't want to get into another debate with my Protestant friends, but I want to talk about the Catholic Church because really to a great degree, I would say completely, it started with the cancellation of the Catholic Church. You don't have to be a Catholic to understand the threat of this thing. But it is the largest denomination of Christianity, the largest Christian denomination in the world. I don't know where we're at now, a couple billion Catholics. So that's why the Catholic Church had to go first. It's one of the reasons the Catholic Church had to go first. But historically speaking now, I'm talking about the old days of Christendom and the confessional states, the Catholic confessional states, Christians, all of Europe, Catholic confessional states, not that long ago. It was the church then that limited the state. Let me repeat that. The church limited what the state could do and couldn't do. September 26th, 1943. In a pastoral letter, the Catholic Church in Germany vehemently protests against euthanasia. The killing of unworthy life was the Nazi leadership's idea of murdering people with mental illness or hereditary diseases, as well as racially undesirable people. It was repeatedly the subject of contention within the Catholic clergy. Famous in this context is the sermon of the Bishop of Münster, Clemens August Graf von Galen. In August 1941, he publicly denounced the Nazi killing operations which had the cover name T4. So the Catholic Church, with her chain of command throughout the world, modified and restricted the state. There's nothing now to stop these people. They're, omni they're, they're all powerful. They're doing what they want because there's no other entity in the world strong enough to stop them. Don't believe me? Ask Donald Trump how that second election went, went for him, that re-election went for him. You see, he had all the power. He's the President of the United States. He should have been able to win this, right? But some, for some reason, he didn't because there's no restriction on this new entity called the New World Order. That's why, I'm, as a traditional Catholic, I'm convinced if people would begin to see what's happening to our world, the infrastructure of the Catholic Church is still there to be rebuilt. We still can compete with this New World Order, but we need to wake up now if that's going to happen. So today, you're wearing that mask. <laughs> you're, you're hiding from your friends and family in your basement. You're staying six feet away from people. You're doing all this. You're getting vaccinated now because the restraining arm of the church has been intentionally crippled. You see? The church has been transformed now into a new religion. I'm talking again about the human element of the church. Ultimately, God will save his own church. But right now in the temporary, the chastisement is the human element of the Catholic church. And that has been transformed into a new religion, a religion of tolerance that, by the way, at the moment cares more about plastic straws and climate change than the slaughter of the unborn. That's how bad, how out of control it's become. But getting to this point, to the point of Pope Francis, it was a long time coming. The first pope to team up with the United Nations and rely on the United Nations for peace rather than the, the Prince of Peace, the first pope to do that, also removed his crown and he stuck it in the museum. We put a little bit of that tape up on screen. We've shown it before. This is the pope removing his own papal tiara, He's the symbol of his own power, setting it aside forever, sticking it in a museum and turning the church over now to the New World Order. This is the same pope who abolished the old Latin Mass, and who reset the church in the image and likeness of the Second Vatican Council. Pope Francis's visit to the All Saints Parish in Rome this Saturday has plenty of history behind it. It will be a way for him to honor the Mass that Pope Paul VI celebrated there on the same day exactly 50 years ago. In fact, it was the first public Mass celebrated by a Pope in a language other than Latin. Paul VI alternated between Latin and Italian. In fact, the Second Vatican Council had proposed using local languages instead of just Latin so more parishioners could understand the homily. The Council, the liturgical reform, had wanted people to be more involved in liturgical ceremonies. And what was the result of that? <laughs> well, look around you. The church is doing exactly as she's told. Italy is shutting down her own churches over Easter this year. Easter Sunday, Holy Saturday, Easter Sunday, Easter Monday, shut down. 
On top of the reinforced measures, Mario Draghi's government has also announced a nationwide lockdown for Easter weekend. The church is now the little lackey of the New World Order. Look around you. There's no restraint to any of what they're doing at this point. They are castrating little boys and calling them little girls in schools, whether parents like it or not. Where's the church? They're slaughtering millions of babies in the wombs. Where's the church? They've de re redefined marriage to be between two men, two women, doesn't matter. Where is the church, friends? These are the results of what happened 50 years ago at the Second Vatican Council and the, the run-up to the council from St. Pius X moving forward, the first half of the 20th century. Yes, okay, we don't have to have that debate about things weren't perfect before Vatican II. You're absolutely right. They set it up for a long time. The coming out party was Vatican II. And what we're looking at in our world right now is a result of that coming out party. They're slaughtering babies born alive. And the church is just sitting there worrying about what? At the moment, the bishops are mostly worried about keeping us masked up, forcing us to vaccinate and social distance to keep the churches at 25%. <laughs> you see, while babies are being slaughtered, yeah, it has shut down the churches all over the world over a virus with a 99.7% survival rate. And we lost the sacraments because of that. Babies weren't being baptized because of that. They're not being baptized right now in countries like Catholic countries like Ireland. Can't get baptism. They're baptizing babies at home because of what the bishops of Ireland are doing right now, which is nothing except obeying the New World Order. And now what do we have? If you want further proof of the disaster of what has happened to the Catholic Church, we have a new and improved Catholic in the White House. <laughs> A compromised, pro-abortion, foolish person whose Catholic faith, faith poses absolutely no threat to the New World Order. And why is that? Because he's not Catholic. President Joe Biden has never been shy about his faith, referencing scripture. As the Bible says. Teachings. I grew up with Catholic social doctrine. And of course, nuns. I, I guess I'm a Catholic school kid. You, you play by the rules, you know, uh, what the nuns say you do publicly sharing his faith in a way that wasn't possible 61 years ago. Nancy Pelosi is a Catholic. John Kerry is a Catholic. Sandy Cortez is a Catholic. Andrew Cuomo is a Catholic. Dr. Tony Fauci is a Catholic. Jimmy Martin, God help us, thinks he's a Catholic. You see what happened? They've redefined, completely redefined, redefined and reimagined what it means to be a Catholic. This is the reset of the Catholic Church. When I was a kid, I remember when this happened. I was a kid when they canceled the old Latin Mass. Again, you don't have to be a, a Catholic to see the point. We had a liturgy that was the old Latin Mass went back 1,500 years, venerable Roman rite, every country in the world united all Catholics in the common Latin language of liturgy, you can go anywhere in the world, and the Mass was exactly the same. They came along in 1969 and they nixed it, they trashed it, they canceled it. Why? Because that too was part of the breakup of the old world order, the old normal. And then they set up a new normal, which they called, coincidentally enough, a novus ordo, the new order of mass. Kind of sounds like the new world order, doesn't it? Could this be any more obvious? Did you see what they did? They reset the seminaries. They corrupted the priesthood. It's now a gay profession. They removed the communion rails. They removed the altars, the altars of sacrifice. They made the Catholic Church into something our own grandfathers, one generation back, two generations back, would no longer recognize if they were to come back from the grave. But it wasn't just the liturgy. As a traditional Catholic pioneer, my own father, Walter Matt, who founded The Remnant, RTV is a spinoff from the newspaper, he was just as concerned about the war on gender 50 years ago as he was about the Kumbaya gang riding into our sanctuaries on their bulldozers to trash everything. You see? Because the same revolution that wanted to nix the habits on the old nuns, you don't see those in the airports anymore, do you, the old nuns? Well, the same, the same revolution that wanted to get rid of their habits 
also wanted to dress all women in the clothes of men. Now, this gets controversial. I'm not saying if you're wearing pants, you're going to hell. That's not the point. But we need to look at some of this stuff to see what happened. That revolution also tried in those years to change how we dress, to get rid of gender-appropriate clothing. And the traditionalists were all over this, and they were blasted for it. They were called kooks for it. You see, they wanted to change, have women dress in the clothes of men to attack the social order established by God himself, to attack the family, to attack women, to attack motherhood, to blur the lines between the sexes. I got a question for you. Do you think maybe my father was right <laughs> to be concerned about changing clothing even to make, to make it no longer gender appropriate? Here's where it ended up. A 50-year-old junior college basketball player in California is making history, said to be the first person to play college basketball as both a man and a woman. Gabrielle Ludwig is 6'6", 220 pounds, and until six months ago, she was a man. Here's something that maybe those of you who just discovered the traditional Latin Mass, praise God, I'm glad you have, but did you know that traditional Catholics, when I was a kid 50 years ago, were just in all-out holy war against rock and roll music? Did you know that? I wrote a book about that, the, what, what rock music did to the Christian culture. The Beatles were highly controversial. I know that comes as a shock to many of you. The Beatles arrived in Japan today as their tour of the Far East continues. Across the Pacific in the United States, a furor is developing over comments John Lennon made. Quote, Christianity will go. It will vanish and shrink. We're more popular than Jesus. Unquote. Here in Tokyo, violence broke out when right-wing fanatics demonstrated against the Beatles and their effect on Japanese youth. This is Tommy Charles. If you, as an American teenager, are offended by statements from a group of foreign singers which strike at the very basis of our existence as God-fearing, patriotic citizens, then we urge you to take your Beatle records, pictures, and souvenirs to the pickup point about to be named and on the night of the Beatles' appearance in Memphis, August 19th, they will be destroyed in a huge public bonfire at a place to be named soon. They were extremely controversial. Controversial. They knew what they were doing. John Lennon knew what he was saying. He was a philosopher. Imagine is the theme song of the New World Order for a reason. And traditional Catholics were actually very worried about the British invasion, believe it or not. Okay? And the so-called neo-Catholics, they were mocking people like my dad for being stuck in the past. They don't like the, the new music. They're such old, you know, dinosaurs, a bunch of idiots. <sighs> Looking at what's happened now in pop music, do you think maybe the traditionalists, just a tiny little point, maybe. I would show you a little bit more about Cardi B, or what I'm trying to say here. Something called Cardi B and her pornographic soul-killing, raw sewage, little ditty for the kids of the world, which some have ranked uh, as song of the year. I, I, I can't even give you the, the title of the song because it's so foul, it's so pornographic, much less show the video. I hope you don't know what I'm talking about. I bet you do. That's where it ended up with pop music, in the sewer. <laughs> in the sewer. They're, they're pumping raw sewage into the minds and souls of children, our kids. It's, it's hard not to conclude they're intentionally trying to degrade our culture and hurt our children. I mean, absolutely, Tucker. I mean, Dr. Seuss, gone. Mr. Potato Head, problematic, not enough genders available. We've seen going through the supermarket as a traumatizing experience. We lost Aunt Jemima last year. We lost Land O'Lakes Butter last year. We lost Uncle Ben and his rice last year because everything is so traumatizing uh, for children to look at. But this, this spectacle, uh, virtually what we were looking at last night was a lesbian sex scene being simulated on television. And this is considered feminist. It's iconic. It's forward. It's progressive. It's the way the world's going. Tucker, and if you don't see that, it's because you're a bigot. You're actually actively trying to make children aspire to things that are grotesque. This is not about diversity anymore, Tucker. It's about perversity. No. We are celebrating perversity in America. Again, maybe the tragedies had a little point. Maybe. My father was called a fanatical encyclical thwacker for relying on pivotal documents such as Pius XI's Kosti Kanubi against the sexual indoctrination of children in classrooms. Now, what do you think? Do you think he was wrong? Things like gender are like the last thing on their mind. They look like, um, like mermaids and queens. 
we done yet? Hi, I'm Miss B. I am the draft paper directing story hour this hour. Welcome! Yeah. Again, maybe the tradies had a little point. Maybe. It used to be the old stodgy traditionalist worried about what was happening with contraception and the family and the attack on women, the attack on fathers. Not anymore. I'm curious, would you mind riffing a little bit on why the family structure is so important because it's being attacked now? So, I mean, like if the stated goal of cultural Marxism was to destroy the father, you see that its ultimate end is our current day, which is the, our, our culture is destroyed as a result of easy divorce, abortion, contraception, radical feminism. The traditionalist war on contraception started decades before Roe because the traditionalists recognized the abolition of the Christian family as agenda number one for this burgeoning new world order at the time. And what makes it kind of ironic is that, you know, guess what? Bill Gates, he rarely mentions abortion, does he? And neither do the sustainable development ghouls because their agenda is all on global access to sexual indoctrination and contraception. I'm here in London with Melinda Gates. She's here for a conference on birth control organized by the Gates Foundation with the British government. Well, the pledge is to get 120 million women access to contraceptives by the year 2020. Now, you, interestingly, are a Catholic. Well, the Catholic Church believes in a form of contraception, and that is natural family planning, natural birth spacing. And that's an okay method to teach women. So once again, Left to ask, do you think maybe the traditional Catholics had a point? We gotta go back, friends. You know, there's so many people, so many good Catholics who still think what's happening, what happened 50 years ago in the church was a good thing. In what sense? What has gotten better? Can you name two things that have improved? You know, the churches are all closing down, the schools are all closing down, vocations are shot to hell. Kids don't bother staying in the church past confirmation anymore. You know, what, what, what is good about what's happened to the church? Nothing. And the sooner we admit this, the sooner we can restore the church, the sooner we restore the church, we can actually make a stand against this totalitarian regime that's throttling us by the neck right now throughout the whole world. There is an incredible movement beginning to take form here in Spain. A group of police officers have come together to start an organization called Policias por la Libertad, Police for Freedom. And now we are marching together with them, standing up for our human rights and constitutional liberties. History tells us that once the peaceful resistance gains the support of the police or the military, we have 60% higher probability to be able to dismantle a tyrannical government. And this is what is taking place right now. We need priests. We need Catholics. We need bishops. We need a pope. We need priests to go back and become the new Father Miguel Pro. Take a stand. Get arrested. Maybe some of us are going to have to die, but we got to fight. Become the next, the next Maximilian Kolbe, who stood against Nazism, ran a printing press in his basement, practically single-handedly undermined the whole agenda of the Third Reich, a Catholic priest, or Father Walter Sizek in the, in the Soviet Union, standing against the totalitarians of that day. We need bishops, real bishops, manly bishops. Please, your excellencies, stop lisping. Just as we love Pope Francis, we love our Metropolitan Cardinal Dolan. And I, what it was powerful for me was to be... Become Catholic men again. Become Cardinal Joseph Menzenti again. Lead us. Become the John Fishers. Become the Archbishop Lefebvre's. Some of you already are. Cardinal Raymond Burke, Archbishop Carla Maria Vigano, Bishop Athanasius Snyder. God bless these men. The last holdouts of the old Catholic Church. And they're out there right now. They're on the front line right now. Please, your excellencies, fathers, walk out. 
into that no man's land and stand with them. Stand with them. To save yourselves, save our children, save the church, save the country, save the world. All of us, all of us. We've got to become Catholics again. We've got to take a stand. Become like that little kid in Poland with the crucifix some years ago. I hope we have a video clip. We can put that up to remind you. Become like this guy. Become like this little heroic Catholic nun in Myanmar last week standing alone against the regime in her part of the world. Just look at that, that image, friends. Let's put that back up on the screen. Just look at her. Look at this little nun. <laughs> that is Catholic. And look at how her example impacts the police, the mighty, brave cops, <laughs> who moments earlier were ready to fire into a crowd of kids. Suddenly, a little nun takes to her knees in traditional habit. And all of a sudden, the soldiers are kneeling, they're folding their hands, they're, <laughs> they're praying, probably crying because they saw something so powerful. They're looking at something so much more powerful than the little pop guns and the scary helmets of the New World Order. <laughs> Look at her. That is what is going to defeat the entire New World Order. That is it. The Christian arsenals of faith and hope and love. They got no answer for that. Friends, these people, these globalists, are trying to take over the whole world. They are going to fail. Why are they going to fail? Because this is madness. <laughs> and we can help them fail if we believe, if we have every confidence in the world that the agenda of the globalists is so insane, it can't possibly succeed. It can't succeed. Stop being afraid. Take off your mask grab your beads again put on your scapular take up the cause of the latin mass and go back to holy tradition you know because maybe it is the end of the world but maybe it's not either way if we become catholic again we win either way the answer for us is the same become catholic again the traditionalists were right friends all along these men and women who are long since dead and in their graves, they were absolutely right to fight like they did. Be like them again. Because if you want proof that the traditionalists were right, all you have to do at this point is open your eyes. I'm Michael Maff for Remnant TV. Thank you so much for, living, for listening tonight. God bless you, and we'll, we'll see you next week.